Good day, class. I want to specifically welcome you to this course again. It is called Basic Communication, Tower 105. Basic Communication. In the other class, the first uh, session of this class, where we first met, I did tell you the essence of this course and a, a general overview of what this course is all about. This course is telling you how critical communication is so that you can communicate better. That is just the essence of this course. The end result of this course is to help you to make more sense while trying to make sense. Today we'll be looking at the topic models and process of communication. Define communication so I'm very sure that by now you know the meaning of communication as an act of sending understandable message from one source to another for an impact. It's sending an understandable message from one source to another for an impact. When you say, get out, for instance, it's a form of communication that needs response. So there should be an impact on the person who is receiving the message. So today we want to go deeper into our discussion, looking at the models of communication. Models talk about templates that have been proven over time by researchers in the communication process. So today we'll be looking at the broad spectrum of the model. When you talk about models of communication, there are three general overview of the communication models. We have the linear model of communication. That means the school of thought that believe that communication is a straight line, it works in a straight line way, uh, approach, that is straight jacketed, where you have a sender, a message, and a receiver. And to this group of uh, school of thought, they believe that communication is a form of uh, a, a, a vertical or horizontal means of diffusing uh, information. Then we have those I believe that the, the models are fall within the range of transactional, the transactional model of communication. These models believe that communication is no more than a one-way interface between two individuals or two, two group of individuals. That is, when a message is sent through a medium, the receiver gets it and the receiver is supposed to act on the message received. So it becomes a form of exchange of information between one group and another or between an individual and another. That is why we say there must be an impact of your message. At times, the, 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 the linear mod, uh, model of communication usually work in a, 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 a military zone, a kind of regimented communication setting where orders are usually given. But we have the proven models that communication experts have developed I will look at specifically under this spectrum that we have discussed. We look at the Aristotelian model of communication. It's from the name Aristotle. It was developed by the great philosopher, Aristotle the Great, who existed hundreds of years before Christ. In his own development of communication model, he looked at the communication as the process of sending a message to a receiver. So it falls under the linear model spectrum that I did say earlier. Here, he believes that there is 
a sender who sends a message to a receiver. And once the message gets to the receiver, communication has been completed. The communication cycle is over. So, just three process of communication according to this model. Sender, message, receiver. So, even if there is going to be a feedback, which it was never a message in this in its development, then it's not supposed to be a continuation of this of the initial communication. Rather, it is a, a creation of a new communication process. So it is linear. That communication has a beginning and an end. Once the message is sent, through the medium has been able to deliver the message and the receiver gets the message. That is all. Then, a further proof into the communication model was developed by a political scientist called Harold Laswell. In Laswell's proposition and development of communication model, Laswell defined communication as who says what, who says what, how, and to who. Did you get that? Who says what? The who here is the same sender that Aristotle talked about. The sender, the, 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 the source of the message. Then what has the, the sender says? Who says what? So here, sound for as the message. How? Is it through written? Is it through verbal? Is it through mass mass media? That is the how and whom. To who? Who is the receiver? What is the target audience? Hmm? Are you talking to political gathering or are you talking to political class? So communication ends when you said what you said, how you said it, and who you have said it to. That is the our last word, uh, model of communication. Having a look at the linear that Aristotle and last word push forward as models of communication. We we'll go into the next model that we call the mathematical model of communication that was developed by great mathematicians called Shannon and Weaver. In their own postulation, they believe that communication takes place when there is a sender who sends a message through a channel to a receiver. However, a new, a new element was introduced by these uh, communicators. They developed the fact that there is a possibility of a noise. However, the noise that they discovered takes place at the channel. So if the noise affect if noise affects channel, then the quality and quantity of message that we get to the receiver may be destructed. And by that, communication is either authentic or otherwise. By noise, they mean any disruption in the channel market. Their own noise is located at channels. When you are sending it, probably in the, the various forms of communication that we discussed before, we said written communication, for instance. The noise in the written communication may be the legibility of your handwriting uh, or the font size. So if the, the, the handwriting is not legible, then there is a noise. At that stage, the quality and the, of message that will be delivered to the receiver will not be the same. There is a message, there is a sender, there is a channel, but noise will, all, will alter the, the quality of the message. Working on the challenges that have been looked, that have been identified in the model developed by Shannon and Weaver, Wilbur Shannon came up with another form of another model of communication. And in his postulation, he discovered that communication is a transactionary process between 
a receiver and a sender whose position and, and role are interchanged depending on the time and place of the message. So the time, the, the position you occupy in the communication process changes according to Shram. So he discovered that in his own explanation that there is a source of a message. The source of the message could be the environment. The environment which usually come through what you call intra, in, in, intrapersonal communication. For instance, when you are cold, who calls the cold? It is not a sender. There is no physical sender of cold. It is the environment that gives you cold. Then you will need to communicate. Probably you need a hot tea or you need a, a heavier plot to put on. So it will, it will push you to send a message. I need help. I'm feeling cold. Then the message you send now, you get to the receiver. The means you send the message are the channels, which could be through written, aura, or mass. Then you have a receiver. When the receiver gets the message, the receiver is expected to send the message to to send feedback to the sender. So at the source here, when he's sending the 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 feedback, it becomes a sender, not no longer a receiver of the message. So the position now will change from being a receiver to a source of the response. Why the initial source will become the new receiver of the message. So transaction uh, communication becomes a transaction, an exchange. And what it, it introduced include the environment and the feedback. Feedback talks about the response from the initial message. But that response is not credited to the source, to the for initial source. It becomes the creation of the, so the receiver. So it's a continuous process as long as what we call the feed of experience relates. When you have similar feed of experience, this is taking me into the element in the communication process now. I see. I know I've introduced you to the element of communication process where I talked about the message, the sender, the channels, the receiver, noise, feedback, environment, and feed of experience. The feed of experience talks about the similarity uh, in, the inter, uh, in the communication environment. For instance, when you are traveling with your friend, you discover that the journey will be filled with a lot of gist. You talk about your family. Probably I know your dad, you know my dad, I know your mom, you know my mom. You gist about the father and mother. From there you enter into the school. Maybe you are in the same school. You talk about your lecturer. You have similar experiences. So the field of experience drives communication. So it makes it a transaction, an unending exchanges of ideas from one group, one from an individual to another, or a group to an another. Therefore, when you look at the process of communication, the process of communication, it involves the means through which information flow or message flow and passes from one source to another. And what are these processes? We talk about the message. very critical. I'm bringing the message because the source of every communication starts from a message. You are, all you are trying to pass is a message. It's the information that you are trying to pass. So where the information comes from is the sender, the source of the information. The sender, the source of the message. So you have the message which is coming from one source, 
where the message originates is called the source, or you what you call the encoder. You can as well call it the sender of the message. Then the means through which the message is sent is called the channel. You may decide to write a letter or send a text these days. Or you want to send a mail. So what you are sending, you are talking about the means. How are you passing the message? It is the how that comes to the channel. Is it in oral form? Is it in written form? Is it in visual? Are you using picture to pass your message? Then you look at who is getting the message. The who now becomes the receiver. You can call it the who the receiver. You call them the encoder. The encoder. Or the the destination of the message. In all, the essence of models and process of communication is to enhance the, the flow of information from one source to another so that there will be better impact. To define communication from all these models, you discover that the best form of communication and the most interesting form of communication is the one that have been modeled by Woodrow Schramm, who sees communication as a transactional process. Uh, a transactional process between a source and, it, and the destination, whose role is not static. The position they occupy is not what, static, unlike the linear groups of uh, models. The linear group of models look at communication as a straight jacket approach. When I say, you hear. But when you hear, I don't respond. That means what I'm saying is usually is not understandable. You have not given me feedback. Finally, the place of noise in, the, in this SRAMS process is key. Because according to him, all the, source, all the elements in the communication process are affected by noise. The noise may be from the source. Some of the noise that come from the, the, the source may include the, the tone of the message. The tone of the message. In fact, even the language. Language could be a noise. At times you, you accuse somebody of making a noise because the message, maybe the person is speaking in his local language. So to you it's a noise. And the tone is using, or she's using. It's a noise. That noise affects the source of the message. So if from the source the noise is not taken care of, then the receiver may not, will not be carried along. What happened to the environment? The environment of the message also can be affected by noise. How? When you are trying to sell, you are, try, you are trying to take a lecture in the market. Yes, the market is a place where you learn how to buy and sell, isn't it? It's also a lecture place. But teaching you Tower 105 inside your, your, your church auditorium, you should know that that environment is not palatable, it's not suitable for that message that I want to pass to you. What if you have to praise God while you are hungry? Will, it be, will God be awesome to you? Or where you are money? So the environment can also be affected by noise. The channel, a message that you are supposed to pass through oral, for instance, and you decide to use written means of sending the message. So misuse of channels can constitute noise. When you use wrong channel to send the right message, it will deliver a wrong information to the receiver. So what are the feedback you are going to get will be different. And what happens at these receivers, the, the, the receiver, the, the initial receiver? What are some of the noise that you notice? One, if there is imbalance in your field of experience, 
you want to gist about Lagos with somebody who have not left the village, for instance. Or you want to tell you want to talk about Taiwan 05 with somebody who have not gone through this course. You discover you'll be talking and there will be no mutual response from that person. The next thing you'll be hearing, what are you saying? What did you just say? That means your message has not been comprehended and the feedback you will get will not be of the quality that you expect. So the more the field of, ex of uh, experience is related, it relates the, f the smoother the flow of information and communication between two groups. We have been able to explore models and process of communication in this cl our class, and I'm very sure that with this, you will know the right model to, to apply in making the right sense to as you, for, as you for, further relate with your colleague. In our next class, where we shall be looking at the, how you perceive and receive message information, perception and reception of in, information, I urge you to keep communicating and making more sense. See you next time.